Welcome to the Business of Cleaning. My name is Haley Morris, and I'm your podcast coordinator and host. Our show is about bringing together the advice of experts from all the way across the cleaning industry. And for season two in particular, we're going to delve into how to utilize important connections to both elevate your business and your career. If that's of interest to you, just keep listening. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Business of Cleaning. My name is Haley Morris. As you've probably heard a million times, I'm your podcast coordinator and host. And today's episode, we are going to talk about the perk of virtual groups and virtual networking and some specific groups in particular. We're going to talk about Facebook groups and why they're beneficial why you should get involved and how you actually maximize your involvement in there. And for that, I have brought on my boss, Sam Reeksecker, and he's going to go ahead and introduce himself. Yeah, as Haley said, um, I'm Sam Reeksecker. Uh, I am the manager of marketing operations at AA here, um, or janitorial manager, depending on who we're talking to. Uh, and, you know, my job here is to kind of coordinate all of the marketing efforts, whether that be Facebook groups or um, you know, sending out social messages or email blasts or website development, that kind of stuff. So uh, I'm kind of a universal hybrid character and, um, uh, you know, just directing the team in which way to go. So that's my role. So if you have questions in regards to our marketing efforts whatsoever, Sam is the place to start. I know the podcasting and the podcasting. <laughs> yeah, right, right. And and the podcast even, you know, the idea started a little over two years ago. And so it's been kind of fun to see Haley come aboard and kind of own it and take off from there. So, um, you know, it's exciting to watch and manage and, you know, see the back end stuff happen um, and, you know, add this to our uh, portfolio, I guess you could say, of marketing efforts to give our industry more content. So um, it's it's good to see this podcast continue to grow. I like it too, because we I think we've heard of people talk about businesses and things that have started or new hobbies people have picked up during COVID. And uh, the podcast is truly a COVID baby. It planning began in May-ish, May, June, and mm-hmm. we launched in September. And so we are into our second season and we are rolling along quite nicely. So I hope everybody has got a chance to see some of the guests we've already had on. And if you're interested, you could always join us for an episode as well. With that being said, what we're doing with the podcast is we're really helping you expand your knowledge and your network. And podcasting isn't the only way that you can do that. You can do that through other free resources because we like that term free. And by free, we truly mean free. Facebook is accessible to all. And I don't know a group that you have to pay to to join. Almost all of them that I've ever heard of are completely free. And then they'll offer additional things on top. Some groups get more exclusive and move off the platform. But for podcasting, for janitorial, um, for networking, just in general, business insider information, there's all kinds of groups. JM itself runs a community and there's a plethora of them that Sam is involved in as well. So that's what we're gonna jump into and talk about today. Yeah, so, so the another another industry is the insurance space. Um, I don't believe we have insurance products that tailor more towards the insurance industry. So yeah, as far as you know, industry groups, hobby groups too, local groups, Um, so we're going to kind of touch on that stuff here as we go along during this, but, you know, it's definitely an area where businesses can grow and, um, uh, and continue to expand upon, uh, and, you know, and, and I think it's some low hanging fruit too, for a lot of businesses, especially in the Jansan world. I like it too, because I didn't realize how many garage sale groups and liquidator groups are out there. And uh, when you're balling on a budget, they're very, very nice to have around. Um, Those are your buying and selling groups. But I think what we're really going to focus on today are those like networking, um, knowledge specific groups that can help you expand what your, your understanding of the world around you, or at least your industry around you and what's going on and impacting that beyond that 
without having to go pay hundreds of dollars at a conference or worry about catching a virus, for example, whether that be the flu or in recent times, COVID. And naturally there are a lot less events available. So information is more precious than it has been. And so with that being said, I guess, Sam, what is your advice when somebody is maybe new to the Facebook scene or new to really just this idea of joining a group on Facebook? Because I didn't start joining groups until probably like six months ago or so. What do you, what advice when they're looking to find a group, how do they be more specific about it than just typing in a couple keywords? Yeah. So over, I would say over the last probably year, it's been pushed as a functionality on Facebook, um, more so even than Facebook pages. Um, you know, as a business owner, obviously you're going to want to have a Facebook page. You're going to want to have all of that marketing around the business itself. Um, and then, you know, my first thing as a business owner is I would try to get in some, into some Facebook groups that are more industry driven. So, you know, this space, there's a couple of different industry groups. If you search anything like janitorial business mastermind, I think is one of them. Um, you know, JM community, uh, janitorial manager community is one. Um, there's a bunch of different JM in, janitorial industry groups that I would first kind of search for. And, and you can search janitorial, um, you can probably just search janitorial and then go up to and click the thing, uh, the filter option that says group, and they're all going to be there. Um, you know, in my personal opinion, I probably would join as many as I can because there's going to be valuable information in all of them. And you might get to the point where you see um, a certain, you know, consistency um, between people posting in multiple groups. Um, and, you know, that again, that's kind of like, the nature you can share different industry news. Um, you can share what's going on in your company. Um, so that's how I would get started. Um, and uh, yeah, you just, it's, it's a simple search query. And I know um, you said, you know, other than just going and search, but I think that's part of the game. I mean, that's the cool thing about Facebook is you could literally basically, it's a, basically a search engine for social. So um, a lot of it's just searching and trying to find it. And you're going to, get into groups and then there'll be suggestions or, or, um, you know, people will post, Hey, what are some other groups I can get in to increase my knowledge? And, um, there'll be linked and stuff. So you can add from there. But, um, to me, I personally, I like Facebook or Facebook groups better than pages because one, they're in my feed more often. And two, I feel like I'm involved into something. So, um, those, that's kind of my long answer for, um, how to get involved. I'm really, well, I guess I'm going to go back because I was thinking about when you join a group, one thing I've noticed with some of the local ones is I'll want to share things with my friends. And in this case, you might want to share it with other people in your company or colleagues that you frequently interact with and bounce ideas off of. So if you find a really good group and you see that the engagement is high and things like that, then adding other people, other industry professionals who could not only benefit from the group but could add to it it's only going to help you well and and i think it helps the company too so like uh you know a couple of these jm or janitorial groups that i'm in you know i've added co-workers because you know one it's it's good industry knowledge for us as a company um obviously we sell software in the space uh so it's always good to see what you know some of our current customers are in there some of our prospects are in there some of our past customers are in there it's all kind of it's a living, breathing group. Um, so it's good to kind of stay involved and uh, uh, kind of keep your eyes in the industry to know what's coming, you know, what are people seeing in the field? Um, and I know some people don't, and this is more on an, like an outsider perspective um, for the software side. Some people don't like to, you know, or even a business side, some people don't like to intertwine the personal with their business at some point, especially if it, you're adding an employee to a group. Um, but I think it's an extension on how you can grow as a professional and, uh, you know, as a cleaner or as um, a manager of a cleaner. So, you know, I think it's valuable to kind of stay in, in the know of what's going on in the industry. Um, and I think the easiest way to do that is by adding your um, coworkers or adding your management team or adding um, really anybody who relates to your business um, 
to really kind of not only it around either uh, uh, knowledge about the industry, what's coming, et cetera. So there's a lot of good stuff in Facebook groups. I was going to say too, because I get that Facebook tends to be the more private platform as in you want to keep your circle a little more well-known, or at least there's more people who do versus Instagram or LinkedIn, especially LinkedIn is pretty much mostly professional. And you add in that cousin who's got a great job every so often. Um, and you know, other, other channels are very much there more for the public representation. I know anything I put on Instagram, even if I have a private profile, which I don't, because why even bother? I, I know more people are going to see it. Whereas I tend to express my opinions and be a little more vocal in my beliefs on Facebook because it's all family. And if we're going to fight, we're going to fight in person or on Facebook. It doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> but you tend to look at it as Facebook is your family or your close friends and things like that. that. Those are those tighter connections. And if you want to start looking at the professional side of Facebook and you're worried about, like Sam said, bringing your coworkers into more, a more private platform for you, the easy way to do that is every single post you make can be filtered down on who sees it. So it can be your friends. It can be specific friends. I mean, you can even say all friends except for so-and-so, so-and-so, and so-and-so. Um, and then you have your public stuff. So all of my Facebook stuff, I control what goes public. And there's only a couple posts that I picture those posts as if I have somebody I connect with, for example, on a podcast Facebook page or a janitorial Facebook page, and they come back to my profile, I treat it as a professional profile, just like LinkedIn. So all of my public stuff is the stuff I think would be posts that are engaging and good representations of myself. And then if I engage with somebody else through one of those groups and I don't want to see them, then the rest, I just don't accept a refund request from them. And I let them know that it's nothing personal, just friends are personal relationships and they're a work relationship. And I'm happy to add them on LinkedIn. So that is the way I see it. And for the most part, that's pretty good. A couple of friends I've made through these Facebook groups have trickled into my, my actual friend group and they see my stuff. But other than that, it's a nice way to keep, you can see the region I'm from, you can see, you know, my employ my employment history and the things that I control. And then you can see a couple of posts that might be podcast related or related to something I'm super proud about. But otherwise, if you're not my friend, you can't see the rest. So that's a really easy way to control, you know, how much privacy you have while inviting, still inviting maybe coworkers and stuff to these groups because you don't have to, you know, interact outside the group necessarily. Yeah. And, and I think it's important to the lifeblood of your growth of your company too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can, um, I think a lot of people draw the line between work and, um, and personal life, like you said, and I think it's important to filter that stuff um, by, you know, editing the privacy on, um, certain posts, et cetera. But I think it's important to um, still be active and really challenge your your teams to stay active and um, because they might find some news or some information that can help them do their job better. Uh, and I think that's important too, because that's important to the growth of the company, but also the person as a professional. And in this space, stuff's changing all the time as of late. So it's important to, um, you know, kind of stay up, up to what's going on. So, um, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of, uh, of Facebook groups, even if you're trying to be super private, like, you know, myself. So. Yeah. Well, I was going to say too, I was, I had a Facebook like when I was really little and then I got rid of it at some point, or I have no idea actually what happened to that Facebook, if I deleted it or what, but um, I didn't recreate another Facebook, I think, until I joined college or something. It was like really late. It was either late high school or sometime into college because I just remember not being able to stay on Facebook and probably because it was all my family on there. And I'm like, you guys are drama queens. Yeah, I well, I think part of it's generational, too. So yeah. you and I both are a little bit in the, on the younger side. Um, you know, I think I got my Facebook when I was in like eighth grade or something crazy like that. Uh, you know, and, and Facebook has grown a lot since then. And there's it's gotten to the point now where it's a huge networking um, platform, mm -hmm. you know, and I know we're focused on Facebook groups, but uh, 
you know, I'm connected with people from past employment, you know, friends. Um, uh, uh, when I was at the time when I was running my own company, I have a lot of network in that space too, in the automotive world. Um, so, you know, I know of good friends I could message from Hawaii, which I wouldn't have without Facebook. I have good friends that I can message on the East Coast that I knew that I wouldn't have because of Facebook groups. So there's a lot of different, you know, the the industry is what you make it. And, uh, you know, and I, and I think it's, um, it's important to stay active on it. Um, I think you're going to be impressed um, with how fast you become a, a, a person to watch in these groups. Um, and it does take time. And a lot of people want to turn off work when they go home. Uh, <laughs> but I think being active and being in these groups can really set not only yourself apart as somebody in the industry, but also your business. Um, because you are, you're your own personal resume walking around and, um, you know, you might be in, a, you know, you talked about garage sale page, you might post your business listing on a garage sale page just to help drive business um, or opportunity. And, you know, um, Haley might run into you at the grocery store and say, hey, you're the guy that posted that stuff on Facebook. I really could use you to help clean my business. You know, do you have a business card? So, being that using Facebook as a tool to really market yourself, not only of yourself in general, but your business can really um, drive some opportunities. And it's a little bit of a long-term play. Um, it, but you know, you're going to get some opportunities off of it. Well, and I was going to say like my reason for joining Facebook is that everybody was on Facebook. People might not be on Instagram. People might not be on LinkedIn or Twitter or whatever else exists out there. Um, they might have sucked you eventually into TikTok. It's definitely fun. Uh, <laughs> but like they might not be on these other platforms, but a lot of the time they're still going to be on Facebook because somebody pulled them in or there was something. I get invites. My biggest thing I'm starting to do now is branch out community wise in my area. And that's a huge thing. For example, I now have a friend in my town's chamber of commerce and she has friends in our, the city's chamber of commerce. And, um, you know, the people from our yoga studio or these local shops, they're all in there. So all these people who make up your community and more than likely the market that you want to draw in are also going to be in these Facebook groups or on these pages. And more and more shops are like Sam said, are realizing that the place to be is in a group and they're starting to create exclusive groups for people who visit their shop. So there's a small local shop here. And one of my friends sent me an invite to join. And I was like, I've never even been there, but I saw their thing. I joined. It's a super fun community. People like to share the unique things they have or fun advice. And what's cool is I know there are people in our area. So I might see somebody who works at a company that interests me or does something that interests me. And I just want to network and find out more about it. Now we have something in common. And if you're a janitorial company, for example, you might meet somebody and become friends with them over a coffee or something. And next thing you know, they're asking you for your business because people will do business with the people they're friends with and familiar with before they will do business with somebody else. So your prices might be a little higher than somebody else's. They'll go with you just because they met you in that Facebook group and they think you're a pretty cool person. So, well, and, and, and that's kind of the idea behind us starting our own Facebook group because we saw an opportunity there is probably a half dozen or so Facebook groups in the Jansan world. And we felt like we have enough knowledge to say, hey, let's get a group together. Let's put some content in there to spark interest. Let's have a place where people can ask questions. Let's, you know, it's open. I mean, it's basically, you know, there's a bunch of people. It's not just exclusive to JM people. Um, you know, it's open to the industry. So, you know, how can we provide the industry knowledge? Um, what are we seeing? Um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And I saw that need and their Facebook groups are continuing to grow. Um, you know, they're, I'd say in the last four months, they've really made a push on Facebook groups as far as plugging them. Um, we've seen some massive growth in our Facebook page or Facebook group in general. Um, and they're, you know, people are being more and more active, uh, so I'm, you know, that's as of late, that's not even like, um, 
as of late, like in the last couple months here, they really, really are pushing people towards groups. So take advantage of that. Uh, you never know, like Haley said, you never know who you're going to run into for one, or it could be, you know, a business that you've never heard of that wants somebody to, or needs your services for something, you know, that might be even disinfecting, you know, who, who knows, but if you're not currently taking advantage of it, then either you're going to be left behind or, um, you know, you, you, you could not see as big a growth out of it. So uh, that's kind of, you know, I think Facebook groups are continuing to grow. They're continuing to push people to them. And, you know, I think it's important not only to use it for a prospecting tool, but also a networking tool, which is kind of why, um, you know, we want to kind of talk about it in the continuous connections uh, season this season. So. Because if you want to continue to connect people in a world that's virtual, you have to find a virtual method. Exactly. Um, and even before COVID, more and more of the world is shifting to virtual networking as a huge form of meeting people, just because we're starting to see our reach go a lot further than our local regions. And while those are hugely important, like I love my local network, our neighbors are opening up a bar downtown. And I think that's super cool. Bar, bar food joint that's going to be upscale and I'm going to be there. Um, but like they're doing that kind of stuff and they're involved and they know people in the community. Like I said, my friends in the chamber and she, her little stand, you can see all around town. And just the more people you know, the more people you connect with. When somebody says, hey, do you know somebody who cleans office spaces? Or hey, do you know somebody that does this? You're gonna be that person's name that comes out of their mouth. And that's how, you know, even at a personal level, you say, hey, do you know an electrician? I have a problem. Or, hey, do you know a plumber? Because um, we now have a shower from our light fixture in the kitchen. Um, and so that's, that's how people get their initial connections. And they do the same for their businesses. And now a lot of those connections are starting or being cultivated on Facebook groups, especially like the local ones, which is huge. And then also, in addition to that, a lot of us join industry groups or these other things in person to cultivate our leaders and our understanding and our knowledge. It does the same thing, but like I said, for free. Now you're starting to see more Facebook group have in-person events or virtual events like coffee talks or our panels for sharing information and things like that. So we're, I'm personally involved with uh, some Facebook groups who do even live training, like business training on news and information. And if you're looking to build your managers as an owner um, or even supervisors, I think, you know, spending time, and that's where you're not only adding people, but sharing that resource. So that will, that might be, you know, they might do like a live, a Facebook live in a group um, and then send or have a link to the recording. It might be you taking the time to get that recording and send it to your people. Uh, so there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of opportunity. And I think, and, and I think if you're not currently taking advantage of it, I think that you're you're basically leaving your team hanging to dry. And I know you talked about the power of referrals. Um, I'm guilty of this. I'll see uh, I'll see something in a Facebook page, I'll like it, and somebody will say, "Hey, do you know somebody who does this?" I've I've actually done this. I've went back through my activity feed in Facebook and scrolled and scrolled and scrolled. I might be spent. 15, 20 minutes on it. And then I sent the person a link to that Facebook group with that person who quote or who said that. So I think it's important that, um, you know, you properly utilize these, uh, these Facebook groups, because I think that there's a lot of room for growth, especially as you continue to build your network. Um, and it's not going to happen overnight. Um, I know back when I was running my own company, I got involved in a lot of the industry groups. And it took a lot of engagement, hours and hours and hours of replying, even if it's like, you know, great job or, uh, you know, that's a great idea. You know, how do you asking questions, intriguing questions, and it's not new posts. It's just engaging with other people in the industry. Um, you would be floored with the amount of people that would recognize you if you did every day, if you commented or engaged with even a half dozen posts, um, in a lot of these groups and, uh, you know, that's how I built my network in that space. And I'm using that knowledge and it's kind of transferred over to the Jansen world. Um, and, 
you know, I'm noticing being involved in a lot of these groups, I'm noticing those people who are engaging in posts, you know, a couple times, a, a couple times a week or a couple times a day, you know, you start to recognize names. And then when they post, you think of them as thought leaders. So you have, and I know you, you, you're talking a little more local, people are going to recognize that, you know, you post up, hey, you know, I clean and disinfect office buildings, you know, give me a call if you have an office building that, you know, you need disinfected or cleaned, you know, I'd be more than happy to give you a free quote. Okay, a business owner that's in one of those, one of those networking groups, you know, might uh, really, really need disinfecting done, you know, and then <laughs> you're the person that they remember to call. So, like, like I said, I, I really, really, really think that, you know, it's important for business owners to be active in these groups. And I know a lot of business owners don't have the quote unquote, don't have the time, but if they have the time to scroll through Facebook, they have the time. to. <laughs> um, and I know that that's something that's easier said than done. Um, but I think it's important for you as a business owner to not only engage uh, uh, with your Facebook group, but also your community, because that's your community is, you know, how you grow your business. So, um, especially in, in the industry space too. So basically your, your community is not only your local community, your national community, but also your industry community. So there's a, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of good stuff. And it's important to take advantage of those free opportunities when you can. I was going to say the one thing about Facebook that is nice is people think of it like those connections as being more personal. There's a reason it's called Facebook friends. I'm friends with them on Facebook instead of talking about, Oh, we follow each other like you would on Instagram. And so when you do develop a relationship, even if it's just a loose connection, it tends to come off as a little more personal or people tend to think of it more personal. And it just goes a little bit further when you at the end of the day need to get things done because friends buy from friends friends commit to friends. And in this case, if you're trying to get in and clean buildings or clean more buildings and develop more long lasting relationships with your customers and your clients, then having them on Facebook or connecting with them through a group and things like that, or even just learning more information. So one cool thing is if you're in this janitorial space, you might be connecting with suppliers or you might be connecting with other people that provide those things and they might help you get discounts that you didn't know existed or they might be able to point out potential customers that you wouldn't have otherwise connect with so being able to develop those relationships help a lot and then like we said the other free resources that come with it are so great um one of the things i noticed a while ago or one of the things that somebody brought up to me a while ago for the other podcast that i run is that their part, she's part of the photography, the wedding photography space. So in the wedding industry space in particular, they suffered hugely last year because even if people were getting married, it wasn't a wedding like we thought. Like you really didn't have vendors, you didn't have catered food, you didn't have live music, you didn't have locations, you didn't have any of that stuff. Even if you could manage to get married, which a lot of people were forced to postpone to this year or next year. And one thing that that meant is there was a huge domino impact of who was affected. So if you were cleaning business spaces and everybody were at remote and suddenly they didn't need a cleaner and you have to diversify a client base that suddenly is pretty much dry, it might be difficult if you're doing it alone on your own island. If you're part of a group, on the other hand, you can start helping others take over where maybe their workload went up because they're in the healthcare space or they're in this space or that space. And you can start to branch out and diversify your portfolio just because you knew the right people. Or when somebody says, hey, let's have a panel where we get so many people. And then the panel is those in the industry and the people who attend are customers and clients who have questions. That is not only a great educational resource for you to know where your customers stand, for your customers to know where what's going on, but also it helps drive that connection so those relationships do last longer. And so those are some possibilities and some things I've seen that have only added to those companies that are active in the space versus just being a uh, time inconvenience. I think anything that's COVID has really taught me in this, in the um, cleaning space was the way that it, it attacked America was more so like, okay, it hit the coastlines first 
and then it slowly worked its way in and we're uh, headquartered in the Midwest here. And, um, you know, it's been, as of late, we've been hit pretty hard um, with, uh, you know, the virus and stuff. So these Facebook groups I've been watching, you know, people on the East Coast and people on the West Coast have really almost figured out a way to really stand apart from uh, uh, not only their own competitors, but they're able to bounce ideas off each other. You know, what's working? Uh, you know, the electro, electro static sprayers are working. Okay. What chemicals are you using? You talked a little bit about distributors. Okay. You know, what suppliers are you preferring? You know, some suppliers are coming out with new material. Is it working well? You know, those R and D style, um, things I think are important. And that's where, you know, you might get a distributor. I, can't think off the top of my head any distributors really currently that are super active, but you might get a distributor say, Hey, I'm looking to launch a new product. You know, let on um, the next 10 people who comment on this post, I'll send it to you for free. Okay. That's an opportunity to get your hands on some new material before anybody else in your area um, that could potentially give you a competitive advantage. And a lot of them might not even know that the product is even coming. You might be the first one in your area. Um, and that could really stand you apart. And that, that, that single-handedly could be the difference between you growing your business and you staying flatlined, especially for like a COVID, for example, who, you know, really put a bind on this industry. And, and you know, you have people who it put a bind on, but then you also have the people who really scale um, because I think they leverage their network. Um, so that's just a couple of different ideas. You know, being able to know what's coming before it gets to you, I think is if there's anything you take from this, um, conversation. I think that Facebook groups allow you to see um, in more industry news and what's coming and um, kind of prepare yourself mentally, um, you know, for new products or um, a crazy virus that would literally shut down the whole entire world and how to take care of it and how to treat it. Um, so there's a lot of good stuff that these Facebook groups can provide. And, and, and basically it's all it's all what you put into it too. So, you know, the more app you are to engage in the group, the more it shows up in your feed, the more you're likely to see it in your everyday scroll through Facebook. So there's a lot of good stuff uh, um, as it relates to Facebook. And, and I think that there's a, there's a lot of um, low hanging fruit, you could say, um, for a lot of these groups to really not only boost your company, but your brand. Yeah. And I would say too, as far as things to watch, just because some of those things we've mentioned, some of these benefits or the bigger impact stuff has been COVID or things that have happened in the last year. So looking forward, we're seeing a lot of shifts. For one example, we're seeing a lot of political shifts, which lead to a lot of legal shifts and policy changes as comes about every four or eight years or so. And so I know a lot of things to watch for right now is the sustainability initiatives that are going to probably start to sweep through because there has been a larger shift in many other industries. Fashion, we're seeing a lot of shifts and some of the manufacturing and things like that of different goods. You're starting to see higher policy changes that are starting those bigger shifts towards cleaner um, things, whether it's for people um, or it's for the planet or it's for both, um, whether it's going all the way back to the earlier manufacturing stage and trying to address labor issues at the very start and pay inequalities there. So you're starting to just see a lot more shifts and a lot more changes and things like that that could lead to bigger changes up front. So if you're talking to suppliers or distributors and things like that, how much are your goods going to cost in a year? What goods are going to be available in a year? Well, you might start to see some tra trends now or somebody else might be spotting some changes as far as what you're allowed to do, how you're allowed to clean, um, the things that affect like what chemicals and dwell time, things like that, that impact how you address a job. Like how long do you need to be on that job if the dwell time increases and you, know, you have to have that area cordon off for a certain amount of time before you can start having public access. Maybe you have to clean at a different time of day now. Maybe that means having more night staff and less day staff. And so there's all these shifts that if they hit you very suddenly, like a lot of people were really struck by the shifts and the changes that happened last March and then in the summer and some of these things with the schools that are happening. Those are huge shifts to be hit with without knowing. And a lot of the legal shifts, those occur quite frequently. And so being part of an industry group, be part of those conversations earlier 
it'll be just part of your process to work in and you'll start to get the hang of adapting versus always reacting. And, so. and it'll help, you know, the time to implement too. So mm-hmm. you're more apt to see it on the front end. So you're able to kind of prepare, put the pieces in place to really, uh, uh, you know, prepare yourself, your business and your employees for those shifts. And I think, you know, we've talked in the past and last season, we talked a lot about potentially some green chemicals and, um, you know, what it takes to, to clean efficiently, not only for cost, but um, for speed. And there was a couple episodes you can go back if you're interested. It was in season one um, that we discussed, you know, different cleaning initiatives that they were seeing and they did talk about COVID. They, they, they talked about the dwell time. They talked about what chemicals they're using. They're talking about how they could sustain their own cleaning using some green cleaning um, solutions that they actually implemented prior to COVID to cut costs. Um, it's more of an upfront cost that they implemented. And, um, and now they're really reaping the benefits because it was what they used to battle COVID. So mm-hmm. that kind of information, you know, you can find on these Facebook groups and um, you know, it, it's not going to be every day. You're going to find a life breaking thing. You know, <laughs> it is Facebook, but you can, you know, another idea is just marketing examples. So how, how are you, do, how are you doing to grow your, what are you doing right now to grow your business? I saw yesterday, someone posted about website ideas. You know, I'm, I'm thinking about reviewing my website. Uh, you know, what are you guys using? Who are you guys using? Um, what was your experience? What should you, what should I include? What shouldn't I, I read through the whole thread. And I'm, I'm in the space, but I'm more on the software side. So I'm not on the front line, but that information to me was valuable because it's like, okay, what changes can we make on our side to help make, you know, um, people potentially search for JM. So it's just a marketing idea, but certain initiatives, certain promotions that people are testing and they're getting good results and they're getting good data. That's just makes your job easy. You can steal what they're doing. So <laughs> Take advantage of that. Um, it's basically free R and D for yourself and your business. So, I, yeah, like I, it's it's so important. It's almost a necessity at this point for the space to really take the time, um, because this space is growing in the technology space. And you and I both know that, and I know the audience knows that too. Um, technology is really continuing to grow. And it's, it's so important to use your network, to answer questions, ask questions, um, share your information with, so. All right, well, I think we have given people a lot of food for thought. We've stuck with talking about Facebook in particular because it is a huge platform, especially right now in the industry. And so this is, I think, where we're gonna leave our audience. I wanna tell you, Sam, thank you for joining us and being part of the show. Normally you're in the background, um, helping me do all the cleanup work before we send these episodes out. But it's great to have you on and it's great to have everybody tune in again. Once again, blog post will have all of your things, say the audio, YouTube video, any links or things we wish to include, we'll include our Facebook group there as well. So if you would like to join the janitorial manager community, you may. And we will see you next week.